Okay, so uh, in this video, what I'm going to go over is how to make a spinning animated GIF. And we're going to go ahead and work from this file that I've used in previous demos. Specifically, we'll use this scanned asset here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit ISO for isolate. And so now in the drawing space, we have uh, just this, this asset here. And that's the zoom select all. Now, to have this object spin, we're actually going to do the animation in Rhino. And so that's done here through our render tools. So you'll give that a click. And then you'll click on this film strip here. And before we set it, um, this is what we're going to set here. This is the set up 360 degree turntable animation. Before we click that, we'll want this vantage point to be one that we're happy with. And, and I'll show you what I mean. But Let's just say I have it the view down here, and I go ahead and click and use my turntable animation. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to just cut the frames in half um, for speed. 100 is totally fine to work with, but I'll do 50 here as an example. And from there, file type, uh, JPEG's fine, and then capture method. So here at the moment, it's set to wireframe. We want this to be rendered. And you'll notice here there is also rendered full. And, and the difference is that rendered full is going to render each frame, whereas the rendered is more like what we use here, this kind of like preview rendered view. And so uh, for the purposes of the, the GIF animation that we're going to make, this rendered one is totally fine. It's a lot more like taking screen captures rather than fully rendering the image out. So that'll be a little bit quicker. And so once you have something like this set up, you can of course use any of these other ones, but uh, rendered is nice for this scanned asset that we have because the materials are mapped right on it. I'll hit okay. And then to preview here, you'll just hit the play button. And so you can see it just spins around. Now, Let's say I want to change the view. Like I prefer let's, more like a bird's eye or something like this, a little bit more top down. If you hit play now, it'll revert back to the previous view. So to change that, you need to just go back to your, your sort of film strip thing and just reset this. Um, the settings will be the same as what you had last time. Uh, also, I'll say direction doesn't matter so much. You'll we'll be able to change that in Photoshop. So. We can just go with clockwise for now. We'll go ahead and hit OK. And so now you, you see it maintains that vantage point. When you actually want to save that, like once you're happy with the view, your preview looks kind of how you would want it to, you can go ahead here and record the animation. And from there, you'll be able to see where it saves your file. So mine's going to Documents and Animation. It'll make an animation folder. That works great for me. I'm not going to change that. I don't really need the uh, animation to run. And the number of passes is 50. We said that before. So I'll just hit Enter. And so essentially this time, it's actually like saving these images rather than the preview that we used before. OK. So from there, you can go ahead and double check that everything's sort of saved where, where you think it is. In my case, documents, animation. You'll see there's a web version of the animation here. You can double click. And there it is, orbiting around. But you have all your still images here uh, as well. And so what we're going to want to do next is work with these, these 50 still images. To do that, we'll go to Photoshop. And from here, since we have 50 files, or, or maybe in your case, 100 or, or even more, we're not going to want to open those individually. We're going to go File, Scripts, and then we're going to go to Load Files into Stack right here. So I'll give that a click. We'll browse our Documents, Animation. I'm holding Shift and just selecting all of those. So I clicked on one here, hold down shift, click on that one, we'll go OK. And those are all loaded here. And then we'll hit OK. 
Okay, so that'll likely just take a bit of time to load, but what you'll find is all of your images are now layers in one file. From here, you'll go Window, Timeline, and then you may have like a video timeline. Just make sure yours is under Create Frame Animation. From there, I'll click. And so it kind of starts with one frame. And then you have this series of options here when you click down. And you can make frames from layers right here. So go ahead and click that. And you'll see now all your files or all your layers are actually in here. And from there, I can hit the space bar and kind of play those. At the moment, the time is set to uh, zero seconds um, from frame to frame. And so you could, I'm just holding shift to select them all. You could have like a kind of delay. Zero seconds is no delay. But uh, even like 0.2 seconds, you'll see. Now it sort of almost reads as if it's like loading. It's a little bit more choppy. So for something like this type of like spinning animation, we probably would want it to be like as smooth as possible. So we'll go no delay. And um, if I was to have 100 frames, it would look even smoother in terms of it spinning. So there we go. Now you'll notice this is spinning counterclockwise. If we want to switch this to clockwise, I'll hold shift. We can go ahead and reverse the frames. And that, so that was just here, reverse frames. And now it's spinning clockwise. OK, so from there, once you're uh, happy with all those settings and things, you can go File, Export. In this case, um, what I would recommend is Save for Web, so Legacy. OK, now this initial file is going to be pretty big. You can see here uh, this is nearly 30 megabytes, but it is also nearly 3,000 um, pixels wide. And so we could definitely cut that down to around 1,000, so nearly a third the size, 36% in this case. And that's going to cut our GIF size down to five and a half megabytes. And that, that's more of a reasonable size for the GIF uh, in the context, certainly, of, of what we're working on here. So we'll go ahead and hit Save. Desktop's totally fine. We'll call this Gasworks Relic. And then from here, we can just go double click just to preview this. And there we go. So that's our spinning animated GIF using a 3D asset in Rhino.